So tell me, what dye flowers are you growing in your garden this summer season? As you know, I've got a good handful of about eight different kinds of wonderful stars in the natural dyer's world. And we got a chance to take a look at those last week in a steam dye technique. But this week, I wanna just do a really quick process of using a hammer to grab some of that vibrant color on paper. So join me today on Color Quest as we pound out some of the summer colors that are in my garden. Now, I don't want you to get too excited. This process is not as exact as what we did last week when we steamed and got some really, really vibrant, beautiful prints on paper. I was really blown away by the results. And although some of them weren't as sharp as others, we did have some incredible results, particularly with Coreopsis and cosmos. I actually really liked the more watercolory effect because that's just my scene. And in today's video, the hammer process is going to be a little closer to that. As you can imagine, the force of using a hammer against the flowers means that we are actually crushing the flower. And that means that it spreads out unlike when you put it into a steam bath and it stays perfectly still. But the result can be a super fun way for kids to get involved. And again, if you're traveling and you have access to some paper, some dye flowers, and even something as simple as a rock, you can pound designs and grab some of that natural color as a living memory of where you're visiting, for example. So let's go get our paper ready and then we will start this very quick process. So as the theme, this is going to be somewhat about repurposing. And that is because I'm going to be using the scraps of the paper that I cut up for last week's video for the botanical printing that we did with flowers in steam. And had all these edges. So I guess today we're gonna to be making maybe like bookmarks if you want. But for me, they're going to be little indicators of the different types of prints each one of the flowers in my garden will make. And it'll be like a guide that I can refer to in the future or maybe bring to classes and stuff like that just to say, hey, this is what I was able to make with a hammer in these flowers. So repurposing Two is going to be my mordant. I'm gonna use an aluminum acetate mordant because I have it pre-mixed and stored. It's the exhaust of a mordant that I've done in the past. And just like we used last week, I still have some. So I'm gonna use that to dip my paper. Paper is a plant-based fiber cellulose and aluminum acetate is really one of the best out there for that kind of fiber. So we're gonna do a quick soak, maybe a minute like we did last week. I'll do it to all the little pieces, let them dry, and then we'll head to the garden. So here are the flowers that I've cut. And I'm gonna do two different kinds of Coreopsis, one that has a that, you know, more red center. I will do one marigold. I just had this one bloom, so it's a slightly different one than I've had before. So we'll see. I have my two pin cushion, Scabiosa, the African Daisy as well as the Cosmos, which, by the way, 
I also harvested some Cosmos seeds. I'm trying to grab some so that I can have some to plant next year. And then I have my one geranium and <laughs> my indigo leaf. My indigo is not quite ready, so we'll see how it prints. So I've got my hammer that I'm gonna use, and I'm actually doing this outside because I'm gonna do it on this stone. So I have a really nice hard surface, and then I've got my paper. I'm gonna use two pieces with this side, and then I'm gonna sandwich them in between so that I have not only my barrier paper, but I'm also gonna get a front and a back print. See, repurposing, I guess, or being efficient. I'm also gonna just put a cloth down just because I did some practice ones and I actually broke the paper. So let's get started. All right, let's take a look at those results. And you know what I've done is I've pulled out the prints that we made from last week so that we can look at the difference between choosing to print with steam and choosing to print with a hammer. Quite a difference. Let's look. Start off with Coreopsis. There's the print from steam. And here's how it looks with a hammer print. Now I think I made a mistake and I wanted to grab the front side and the back side on the same card, but I think I switched them. Anyway, they look pretty good, but as you can imagine, the centers are always gonna spread out, right? So we get a super crisp petal print, and then this is, let's say, the back side, and you get more of the like, sort of hints and whispers and some white parts, which I actually like. It's more of an essence of a flower, but they look pretty good. Different though, right? Here's the Cosmos that we did. 
just lovely. That was the steam, and here are the two hammer prints, this being the front or the top side, and this being the bottom. Again, very similar. We're getting a lot of spread on those center parts, so that just adds, though. It just makes it more interesting, right? Then, of course, the steam from last week with the marigold was hard because it was a thicker flower. And look what happened to this thick flower. <laughs> it spread out. This was also a slightly darker yellow marigold. I didn't have any of those yellow ones available. So in this, I like the center part there. It's a really pretty green to go with that. Then we will look over here at the geranium. Geranium didn't steam print as well because it was quite thick. But look at these really pretty essence of geranium with hammer printing. We got some green from that center part and then some darker purples as well. It's amazing how the color's purple when the flower itself is really a vibrant pink. Then the African daisy. Now I thought this was absolutely stunning even though the leaf and stem part didn't work. But look at these, how fun are those? You can see that those African daisies make this really pretty blue, like a periwinkle almost, it's so pretty. But those centers really smash out and overtake it. But what you can do or could do is take off the petals, remove that center part, and then just place your petals in a flower shape and pound those. You would get probably some pretty clear leaves in that beautiful blue and remove this more explosive center. And then finally here is the pin cushion. Again, I had to stim this more time than the others, but we got these really more watercolory effect and they did really well with pounding in that similar fashion. You've got that center, but look at the color. And you know, this pink cushion surprised me. I've done this in the past and the Black Knight Scabiosa comes out more of a greenish blue. So these are really holding onto their purple color. And then there are the blue ones. Now the blue ones got overtaken by the center again, but look at how beautiful those blue parts are. So they hold some really nice color, just a little different. And then finally, let me show you the indigo. Now, as I mentioned, my indigo leaf is not quite ready, but I still think it turned out really pretty. And I like how it is not fully pounded, that you have these areas of white in here and how different they look, but how equally pretty they are. And you can see how they oxidized blue, but they keep some of that green too. So it's a beautiful blue green option. I'm gonna be using these as tags actually for another project I'm working on. So not a bad result, very different, but you know, you get to enjoy the beauty of your dye garden flowers for seasons to come. So it was really fun to see the comparison between the steam printing that we did and the pounding that we did. And I have to say that they both are equally as beautiful and have a place. I'm always going to love something that's a little more abstract. So I really loved having this as an option. And I have now a keepsake both in steam printing and in hammer pounding of the flowers that I'm growing this year. So next week on Color Quest, let's spend one more day in my garden. And this time I want to go back to what we did while I was in the Netherlands and look at ice dyeing, but with a rainbow of colors all from fresh flowers in my garden so have a great week remember to share the good word of color quest and if you like give this video a thumbs up and always love to have you subscribe we do something fun every single week all about natural color all right i'll see you next friday